You're listening to Cinema Red Pill. I'm Sharon here and with Joel and Timothy. Yeah, and we're back. <laughs> um, it has been a while. Unintended. 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 Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. apologizing. <laughs> this is who we are. Life yeah. happens. Yeah. So, but. yeah. <laughs> it's hard out here. Economy. <laughs> Yeah. So those kinds of things. Uh, but we are back. Yeah. We are going to be consistent again. We hope. We don't know anymore. Actually, yeah. by the way, fuel prices just to get to school. <laughs> not funny anymore. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So, but we are back. We'll always be coming back. So just keep subscribe to our channels and content will come. Um, today we're going to talk about the Galabi Short Film Festival, which happened on the from the twenty eighth to the thirtieth of July. Um. We were involved, two of us were involved. Yes, we were. Full disclosure. As usual, as usual. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Such a hush hush relationship yeah. <laughs> makes it sound like. I guess full disclosure for uh, any biased opinions yeah. that might be implied. Yeah. But uh, we stand by we're not biased in our opinions. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> You were the curator. Yes. So maybe a bit of bias, mm-hmm. but <laughs> you picked the films, Literally. so you can answer for some of them. For some of them. And yes. I was the moderator. Yes, you were. Mm-hmm. And as a good audience member, as well. All the days, though. All of them. All. Okay. All of them. But you can play it sometimes. <laughs> I missed a like, few films. <laughs> <laughs> a few, but yeah. Sally, me, man. So let's see. Um, so for this episode, we're going to talk up. We're going to pick a film for each day because it was mm-hmm. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we'll each pick a film that we liked yeah. particularly that stood out for us that day. Yeah. Um, I will start, and then Tim, and then Joel will go last. Exactly. Yeah. Because I'm the dirtiest. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I keep interrupting you. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. We were just kind of like talking over each other. <laughs> So, <laughs> we're trying not to be compromised. It's like we're giving our PR. <laughs> a PR. A press conference, PR. really, like the worst press conference. It's like we're sure you are not biased. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, the festival happened at the Ugan- Uni- University of East. What? The International, International University, University of East, East Africa. Africa. Yeah. AKA DD's World. <laughs> yeah, because both a university and an uh, amusement, amusement park. park, so that was fun. <laughs> in their theater, they have a really cool place. It they was a do. really good location. Mm. It was just really large, though. I think they used to do Bollywood movies back in the day. Do you remember that? Like oh. when Diddy's World was active, mm. there was a time when, when we still had Cineplex mm. in Kampala. Mm. There was a time I think that was the only place in the city, probably the country, could watch Indian movies on the big screen. Mm. Now Cinemax has mm. Indian mm. movies yeah. in its yeah. lineup, but yeah. But yeah, it is a big, big mm-hmm. space. Yeah, it's sure. huge. Yeah, so it was great. To be at a different location and to be actually in the cinema, not on just simple projection, which is what usually was there yes. at the Bohemian. It was minimalist, you know. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, I mean, for me, it was my first experience, also like actually watching movies communally, like post COVID. Uh, like oh, I haven't really been to the cinema oh, right, to actually like watch okay. movies, so. This was my first experience, and yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's pick our favorites each day. I'll go first. On the first day, there was a film made by Navagala Lillian Maximilian called Faded, and yeah, that one stood out for me. I think this year there were more, there were less like fiction type stories and more documentary. And if an example like this, this was. A video art piece more so than anything, because um, she is saying words. I, would I classify it as poetry? Yeah, with with your body, it's poetry mm-hmm. with your body. Then dance, mm-hmm. like the other film that had this was way more poetic, but this one it was more like a speech of sorts. Like it mm-hmm. was voiceover. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it was intended to be more poetic, but it was to tell the story what she was trying to do, and she was dancing in it. Yeah. And through that piece, she's trying to talk a lot. Up, she's trying to portray a piece of art that is talking about color 
reason within Uganda as well because she talks about how her sister is darker skinned and she has the kind of life that she has lived, the kind of reaction that people have towards her for her skin tone. And generally, like we're talking about before, people bleach a bunch and it's because they don't like their dark skin. It's not celebrated. It's not light skinned. People tend to be sexualized more and admired more, specifically with women. That's not a thing with men. Actually, light skinned men are said to be. Soft. <laughs> I'm saying soft. <laughs> <laughs> But she has softness. Yeah, <laughs> the light softness is more approachable <laughs> as well yeah. in general. Light skinned men are the ones who are marginalized, but then <laughs> <laughs> with women, it's the dark skinned ones that are really marginalized and it's a bit difficult. Um, so, yeah, she has a speech, and here I think I can read it. it says, What defines beauty? Is it through skin shade and tone of all their personality and character in the community? Mm. She has a bunch going on. I think one of the things that people talked about, even in the QA, was about a scene where there's like something peeling off her skin mm. and it just looks so really nice and cinematic the way it was done and the effect that it had. I think at the point I was like, is she like in black things? Because she darkened her skin tone. <laughs> but then I think it's not, it's, it's like just, there yeah. was times where she was using like creams and stuff, which was definitely for the kinds of creams that people use. Uh, but there's a time it was like injections. Remember that mm, there was yeah, like injections yeah, yeah. Yeah, as yeah. if like operational. Yeah. I don't know maybe if there's like an operational bleaching, maybe that's the one she was talking about. But in terms of the film and everything that's in it, I would just say I understood all the material that was used and what she was trying to reference. Yeah. I only also like added from her Q and A she talked a bit more about the kind of how she talked more about the 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 creams mm. and how they work. Which was also what got her thinking about the peeling. Mm. I think like if if anyone has seen someone who has bleached, like some of them have an effect to their skin that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's also one of those things. <coughs> but yeah, that's the film I would say stood out for me on yeah. um, Thursday. Like on that, I'd say there were a bunch of dance movies submitted this year. For one thing, it was it's always interesting to see what people seem to be collectively working on in different spaces. But it was also interesting the Q&A to see some of the crossover because I think she had also worked on a dance film that was shown yes. the, the next day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was a bunch of dance movies and when, when, I, when I was seeing that pattern, I was, I was wondering how, how, how we would like program this. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, like how to like make it work. Um, and yeah, faded. I think the vibe, like the message as well, because you're right. It's like quite abstract, and I think it's more about following. At least to me, I was more following the ambiguity of like the feeling, as opposed to like really focusing on the words she was saying. And really, until like the like the skin peeling stuff and like stuff that's like more overt and like oh, we're talking about colorism and bleaching. Like short of that, I don't know whether I'd have picked. Uh, what was going on at least oh, like, you yeah. were just vibing I was literally vibing man I was like the choreography was solid like amongst the dance films has had some of the strongest uh, mm-hmm. choreography and I also like the thing with like the mirror and the clouds like I like the setting like even like on a technical film level like how they seemingly use little like I know it's a bit deceptive though but it seemed like they mostly worked with very few elements and were able to like it was something that evoked some kind of emotion, so Great. but it was like a really strong piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I really enjoyed it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found I found the discussion very interesting and like like the fact that as you say, people are actually like tackling these topics yeah. that are very relevant <laughs> topics in our society yeah. uh, is good. It's people actually doing that, but. I didn't see the whole film, but I imagine it was great. And she did speak about uh, the part you said, peeling, Mm -hmm. because she did get really deep into, like, even all these techniques people use to bleach. Mm -hmm. Like, apparently there's one where they dip you, like, in a vat of something, and then, like, your skin literally just, I think it's somewhere in Ghana, your skin just, like, falls off. Yeah, yeah. no, like, it removes the top layer and leaves, like, that lower pink skin. And it's, like, a whole other way people are doing the whole bleaching thing these days, so... It was just interesting that she actually <coughs> is trying to tackle these issues in her film, but yeah, I would definitely get to see that at some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, liked, I guess on a side side note, because I think it was a Stone Age Pictures production, my head, I'm always like, Ali Musoke is always everywhere, mm-hmm. <laughs> producing every yeah. issue of films, yeah. so 
Yeah, I'd just like to applaud him, I guess, for that. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's also like good in every festival, I think. Yeah, I think <laughs> consistent. I can't remember an Ingalabi that his production hasn't mm-hmm. been a part of some film somewhere. Yeah. yeah. He does DP or producer. Yeah, he's <laughs> right. So I'm going next. Um, mm-hmm. My film from the first day will be very similar to Faded. It's called Kwetu Kwanza. And uh, it's also, as Joel mentioned, again, this year there was a bit of a trend of a bit more experimental video art dance films. I'd, I'd call this essentially maybe a dance film. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Kwetu Kwanza uh, was, uh, it was two dancers who collaborated with another young director who have actually got to meet Noah, Noah mm-hmm. Groth. Mm-hmm. And it was actually a really great collaboration because when he explained that they had planned out this whole dance before and that choreographed it and they're trying to say something about the environment mm-hmm. and their plan was to make a film. So the collaboration between the two, like the filmmaker and the dancers actually coming together to you know, put their talents together to make this artwork that actually says something about the environment was pretty great. So. Mm-hmm. I would say I liked it also. Again, it's a very mesmerizing film, the way it was shot. Yeah, yeah there yeah. are some scenes where they have this whole dance number right by the lake and like yeah. crested cranes and those are rarity yeah. to see, but like they somehow had them there. <coughs> then there's a whole other section where they're like in this massive landfill, mm-hmm. which I hear is on uh, somewhere in Gaba, mm-hmm. so that's told, somewhere in Gaba. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't think we had any landfills that big in Uganda, but just seeing, the yeah, East yeah Africa. probably it was huge, <laughs> and they were like climbing it and like dancing all over it, and just even though they explained in the Q&A session afterwards that they were trying to actually address uh, environmental issues in the country and mm. waste and recycling, and again, it was just a nice departure, as you said, from the usual fiction or very basic documentary that we usually see at some of these festivals. Yeah. Someone is actually trying to do something. The music was also great. The number mm-hmm. they did, an original score, I think. Yeah, that was really great. And <coughs> again, the choreography, I can't praise the two guys enough because sometimes I do find expressive dancing a bit corny. <laughs> like <laughs> at times, like I must see and all her videos and all that. But like there's a way it really worked. It was very understated and you actually really did feel that this was something that worked on for a very long time and mm-hmm. they poured their hearts and souls into it. So, Kweto Kwanza, Ugandan dance film, yeah. so, be my pick from the first day. Yeah. What do you think, think of it? I think it was my favorite uh, dance yeah. film, actually. Yeah. I think it's the one actually I watched the most. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the vibe, I think the instrumental especially yeah. that they used was mm-hmm. really, really strong. Yeah. And it almost had this like Mad Max post apocalypse mm, yeah. kind of vibe, yeah. yeah, like in Uganda. Yeah. And some, yeah, those seemingly accidental shots, yeah. like the crested cranes, yeah. even like that pan. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it was like a hidden digital cut yeah. or whether it was that seamless yeah. that they went from like them climbing up the landfill, then you have the marabou stock like yeah, flying over. Yeah, and to, though even like marabou stocks lined up on top yeah, of the landfill. It was, was just, like, yeah, like yeah. it evoked a lot of emotions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it wasn't like, the cleanest or yeah. and I think that even walked to its advantage yes. it had that gritty, gritty exactly like feeling yeah so I really really dug that one I think I liked the music a lot I think mm-hmm. I found it so affecting and the change of pace like yeah. from because they started out with pure poetry at a different set yeah. with just like fire yeah the stuff. beginning yeah, yeah. And then like yeah. the change that yeah. happens when they go to like the lab yeah, field yeah. I liked how they were changing locations because Faded is in one location yeah. Yeah. this one was quite different and how we changed location and I like the change of yeah. everything yes. alongside it yeah. with the change yeah you actually just reminded me like during the selection process mm. that became one of the criteria because some films I was unable to sit through or some films that I would even like skip ahead because like we're still in the same location yeah. and I'm not yeah. getting like That's what the story really is. is. That's but with so this annoying. One, yeah, but this one's like, yeah, you're right. We're like by the fire, yes. and we're by the beach, then yeah. we're in the landfill. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, stuff is happening. Stuff yeah. is happening. Like I can now get into the story. Yeah. And it felt like there was a conclusion, even with like the music and everything. So change yeah. your locations, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 For for us lay people who yeah. are not into like expressionist yeah. dance, because I'll agree, for me it's also not an easy genre to get yeah. into. Nope. Yeah, I'm not quite a fan, so I mean, yes, a testament that Kwetu Kwanza makes you feel any type of way. Yeah. I feel like it's very accessible. Yeah. Right, so, my favorite film of Thursday was Dark Box. Um, 
which is a Ghanaian film, I believe, uh, directed by Yemi, I forget his second name. Olaso. Some Olaso, yeah, I think yeah. Yemi Olaso. Get it right. Uh, very <laughs> Jolaso. Jolaso. Yeah. Which are your entire name, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, first of all, I want to say I really enjoyed his Q and A. Such like a charismatic yes. warm personality. Yeah. yeah, such a cool dude. Um, but yeah, Dark Box is a short film, yeah. uh, comedy, and it's about this dude who has like a time travel machine, like this little box that's a one minute time travel machine, yeah. and he's trying to flirt with this girl, to like, hook up with this girl, and so he basically keeps like hitting the button every time he messes up. Brilliant concept, like one of those overly simple concepts where like, you know, I should have thought of that before. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really, really funny. I think like the dialogue, the actors that they picked yeah. were amazing, uh, very charismatic because it's literally one shot mm-hmm. for the most part mm-hmm. and it's two people on a park bench and it's a dude trying to hit on a girl and I think they played it like really well. The comedy is like a bit raunchy. Because I remember when it was, um, again now on like the admin side of things, when it was given its age rating, I think, like I had not remembered, I was like, what's the age rating for? Then I started hearing like some of the oh, yeah. <laughs> the more adult phrases in the, I was like, oh, okay, that's why he said that thing and oh, there's six other things. But it was like funny. It's like, uh, it's like one of those raunchy teenage American comedies almost, kind of in its vibe. Uh, but what I really like about it um, is that it's a dark comedy specifically. And I love the dark places it goes to, with like the multiple suicide thing. Mm-hmm. That line still makes me laugh. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I've never had a guy die for me. Like, I love that transition. Mm-hmm. Or like, what? And then the story just kind of flips on its head, then it like flips again at the end. Yeah, I thought it was just nice airtight. I also love the amount of minutes, because it's short films. When I'm being honest, I'd rather watch a short film that's like under, you know, 10, 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. that's like 30 minutes, I'm it's like, you know, kind of committing like, to uh, part of a feature film. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, yeah. <laughs> but like, the first act of a feature film. Exactly. <laughs> but this one's just like airtight, the concept is there, entertainment value is there. It's like one and done, in, out, gone. Yeah. So I really, really do enjoy that film. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it too. And um, it's, a, it's an adaptation of. An American film, have you watched it? No, I haven't watched the adaptation. You watched it? No, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay. the same name? Uh, no, it it's One Time Time Machine. Yeah, I think it was called One Minute Time Machine. One Minute Time Machine, yeah. yeah. So they can change it to the dark box. And I like that he credits it everywhere. Because yeah. someone had seen it and I was like, they plagiarized, but they did it. But he credits the inspiration. I really liked it. It was fun. It was yeah. cute. It was nice. Yeah. I really liked it. The actors were well done. Yes, mm. I, I didn't get to see that one. Oh, oh yeah, but, you missed yeah, it. Yeah, but it does sound course. like a brilliant course of play. Yeah, yeah. And the yes. fact that you say it's adapted, I'll probably yeah. check out the original. I want to check out the original. I haven't seen it. Be on YouTube because the way he talked about it's like he landed on it somewhere. Yeah. So it might have been like in an internet hall. And also, nice year the film community is that chill with each other. Because he didn't ask, he didn't like have to buy rights or anything. Mm-hmm. He, he just is. like asked, like, yeah. can I use this? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, go for it. And that was the whole conversation. Okay. That's that's great. That was cool. pretty cool, yeah. That's very, very cool, actually. It's always good to know those stories. Yeah, I mean, like when people post the email they send. So you look at it and you're like, you mean? I just can't do this. <laughs> um, what were your yeah. overall thoughts? About, oh, Friday? Like, yeah, just before we go. Day ahead. one. Yeah, day one. Just um, overall thoughts about the program. Uh, let's see. First, to mention that Lookman's film showed this day, but this is a film all of us had watched like a year ago. Yes. So the effect is quite different. It was for a few people, I think, where it was new to them. Mm-hmm. But overall, I think it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, also Lokosa deserves. Like, Lokosa deserves a shout out. Yeah, yeah, South Lokosa African was film. Yeah. I guess my second favorite one. Okay. Yeah. For the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing. I like. I liked. Uh, it for for me it was almost um most like glimpse into the future because we're we're starting like a whole oil mining mm-hmm. thing there. Mm-hmm. So this kind of showed like long term what like a town goes through yeah. that has like giant oil refinery. Like I like I like the subtle touches because mm-hmm. he had like the kid going through like he had asthma like respiratory problems. The dad had like burns from like yeah. working in the factory. Yeah. 
and he had like the daughter who was kind of like listless because yeah. there were not that many options going on in life like it was just all these subtle things and it's one of those those short films where I'm like I would watch a full feature like length yeah. film about this like concept it was really interesting yeah. it's like a side of Africa I don't think I've ever seen I think watching it the first time I was like, wow, we also have these problems. Because at first I thought oil refinery is this some European <laughs> diaspora thing, but no, it's yeah. So it was actually quite special, like concept wise. I mean, even even the kid, the kid actor. Uh, oh yeah, I was like, is this a kid or like like just a very tiny a adult? I think he's, he's a small person. You think? Really? No, but he's playing a kid. Mm-hmm. In there. He's playing a kid. Yeah, it looks like. I mean, I, I saw because so like, of the mature face. No, he has had a very mature. Oh, we need to not talk about this like this. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Anyway, I assume. Anyway, it's. Hey, it's innocently like <laughs> with someone assumes it's a kid and someone assumes. No, I'm not just saying. Yes, had a very mature, he had a very mature screen presence. They say a young he man. Does. He's an adult. Okay. He's a little person. Yeah, my father. Yeah, because he is attracted to her. I'm like this. De- they definitely don't make no. an age old. He's attracted. There is. To her. Yes, yeah, he he's definitely jealous about them when they in the car having sex. But I thought that's his sister. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mind blowing, like I'm getting. Uh, <laughs> no, that's the point where I realized that he was a little person. Yeah, so I, so I kept wondering. Okay. I'm like, this kid is a little too. I had no idea. Even the independence like he had from the moment in the beginning, the independence he had in the in the home mm. was that of an adult. It wasn't of a child. Mm. Yeah. So I was clearly watching a different whole time. So that's interesting to find out. Yeah. Like I literally thought they were related this whole time. Oh God, no! Yeah. Did you think that Lisha? You did. Yeah, <laughs> they just thought like this was his big like his sister, sister or something, up for her. and like she has like left the house and is insisting on being independent or something. Oh. So this is a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's super into her. Yeah. Okay. That's why he, her kissing his chest is like the finale, like a sense of affection from her. So. Yeah. I guess, I guess, yeah. In hindsight, that did feel a little weird. Mm-hmm. With, within the context of like their siblings, so like, okay, that's a bit no, weird. No, and again, the way he was sitting with the dad, like, yeah. it just seemed like he was just a child. Like, so, was it like you know when like you sit with your dad as like adults? Like, mm. it just seemed like he was. But yeah, I see how yeah, it's, it, it's yeah. easy to to. <laughs> yeah, to I guess yeah, that's, that. that's like a lot more depth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch it again. Again, <laughs> yeah. that would be a whole <laughs> other movie. Yeah. 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 No, though I, I'll say I also liked seeing 16 rounds on a big screen. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah, that was something, actually. It's nice. different from yeah. when you're in your phone yeah. or you're watching it on a laptop. Yeah, yeah laptop so. for me, for sure. And, yeah, I think I saw more because I watched it once, then watched mm. it again for the Q&A, then again. And I think I had even, like, yeah, I just it had more depth than I even remember. Yeah, it true. Was really I think his his movies are really good and are made for the big screen because yeah. of all the technical stuff that he's sometimes doing, like this really cool crane shot he does mm-hmm. on top of the flats and yeah. goes down and cuts into another shot. Like I did notice that mm. watching it like on a phone or computer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this was cool. Moving on to Friday, the second day of the festival, um, my pick for the standout film is called I'll Sit, and it was di- written and directed by a woman called Susanna Magani. Let's hope so. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm saying that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, that's what I remember. Okay. Anyway, so I really loved this film, and I even loved, like, I think it even added more when the director sent that video, because yeah. I just loved her vibe, I loved the way she was talking about things, so it just added on top. You know, sometimes you like a film, then you see the director, and they yeah. kill your vibe, <laughs> but this was, so it's always nice when this happens, but this film is so, so good. I think yeah. one thing that I love most about it, because there's really strong films this day, but a strong thing for me about it, it's about a 15 year old, she's called Nafisa. She has a crush on someone, but her parents have arranged a marriage for her with another man who's coming from Dubai. Mm. This just screams money to them. However, there's a, a powerful matriarch and she has her own plans for Nafisa's future, but can Nafisa choose for herself? My favorite thing about this film is no one is on the same page and no one is particularly right. Mm. at the end because the 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 Alcite who is the grandmother who had a weird past 
marrying someone who was really old, but then she found her freedom, which is just <laughs> heaven. But that's <laughs> lucky. Like yeah. tying someone onto that life because she wanted that life for her granddaughter. It's just yeah. so silly, first of all, but valid in terms of you had a good life and just. Also, I'm like, why are you tied with this woman? You know, I'm like, she's, she's so, she's, I found her like, uh, no. And yeah. at the same time, I loved her a lot. Uh-huh. At the same time, I found like, you would also try, you're trying better than her parents at least. Like the complication of that, then her chasing this guy, young boy, I'm like, this young boy also, like, I don't know that <laughs> it's the best thing. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. really like the complication of each one of them and just yeah, yeah. how plain, it was funny as well so funny there was a mishap where he thought that she was the house help which was so awkward Mm -hmm. and funny at the same time Mm -hmm. and the mom was also hilarious posing with the people around the village (laughs) so accurate by the way i think that's just an african yes it was really cool and i also liked the change of setup because it begins at a cotton field and i really liked how that was shot yeah, it, was it was really great i liked how the fuck boy who is coming from dubai is framed and how he moves like yeah it was fantastic yeah. i just think through and through and it felt so nicely complete. She says she's going to make it into a feature, and I can't Ooh. wait to see yeah. what that will be. Uh, but I loved it. Yeah. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah, mm. definitely really beautifully shot. Probably the most beautifully shot mm-hmm. film for me the entire festival. Uh-huh. Um, had the pleasure of meeting the director as well in person. Is cool? Oh, as hell. <laughs> as hell. Super cool. Yeah. Super chill yeah. human. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really love this concept as well. I like all the stuff you got into, like the especially like the traditional stuff with like the Al Sit, who's like this kind of matriarchal head, who mm-hmm. has like a say, mm. like all the marital unions, and like everybody has to respect her word. Mm. And I really loved her backstory oh, a lot. That so like great. she married an old man, and then he died early, and she got her freedom. Like mm. that's the and then that was the best outcome. Like a complete. It's like no other way because she didn't yes. say she wasn't going to get married, and her talking about how everybody else was suffering. Yes. The marriage is just such a strong thing it makes because sense. like. It, our parents have suffered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 most of them yeah. have really. So I, I do great. I do get how it was like an act of love from where yeah. she was coming from. Like I love my granddaughter and I want her to have as good a life yes, yes, <laughs> as it was I so have had. Valid. Yes, and it also made sense that the granddaughter wanted to rebel. Yeah. So those young love things again. Yeah. Probably not the right choice. In the end. <laughs> yeah, but hey, no, like we've all been that age. You're feeling your feelings. No one can tell you anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I thought the ending was sweet as well. I love, I love the open endedness of she might. There's like a version of this where she runs off with that boy or something. Yeah. Might not be the best decision, nope. but it's a realistic thing that you know happens yeah. in real life. And even the stuff with like the mother and the father. Like I love, I love, like I saw it as like a clash of like different love languages or something. Yeah. Because they all were doing things they thought were right yeah. within this set of rules in which they lived their life. Because even while while still kind of siding with the Al Sit, is it didn't seem like Nafisa had had any new opportunities. Like oh, I'm going to school or something. It seemed like she's dealing with the same deck of cards mm-hmm. exactly that the grandmother the has. The same, yeah. But I also get the whole thing of like these older people being like. Ah, no, controlling. Exa- yeah, controlling is, as hell. I like the same like that's how most me, that's how most old people are. <laughs> 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 they are so controlling because they, they have seen the world more than you have. Yeah. But it's like also leave me to yeah. make my I, I I guess that's the trap for them because of the experience can become Kool-Aid that if you drink it mm. can also like cloud your judgment a bit. Mm. So yeah, really an, a very diverse amount of stuff packed into a short film. I'm mm. really glad to hear she's doing a feature yeah. film. I am so there mm. to watch that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll say you guys have pretty much said everything. I think it was also probably the best short film I saw in the festival. Mm-hmm. And again, with the story, there are a lot of things you people are mentioning that I'm beginning to understand better now and unpack. 
but yeah, I think my first, my first, the first time I came across this was actually in an article I had read mm. about the director coming yeah. back to Sudan because she actually did make this film right after Bashir had been toppled, Ooh. and because wow. he was in power for so long, there was hardcore censorship. Certain things couldn't be discussed, like in movies or film or on TV. Mm-hmm. So she was basically like, "Oh no, I was able to make this film was because that whole censorship thing was away for a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's probably back now, but she had that little window where Thank she you. could get in and actually tell any story she wanted." And wow. yeah, so I found it very. It was very good actually to watch it on the big screen at the festival and everything you said again. The choice between comfort that probably the family is trying to chat for her by either getting a, a guy working abroad or the older partner mm. and then her having to make her own choice or if, and rebel against her parents or even against her, the matriarch that I'll sit mm-hmm. was I think uh, the strongest part of the story for me. Just that young girl, as you say, like they could be seeing it from a very valid angle. Yeah. We have seen life, we know what it's going to be like for you, we have planned this for you, live this way, but as a young person, you just have to go out there and make your own mistakes. And then you yeah. come to that conclusion on your own. So yeah. I thought that was a very good thing that was at least explored in that film. But yeah, great film. I loved it. What's your pick? Uh, my pick will be The Beast. The Beast, which is a South African film. I actually I didn't realize the director was white, but yeah, <laughs> South African film that I found very first, probably the funniest film, I think, to me at least, that I watched. During the first Isn't it funny? Yeah, it was very funny. It's just, hilarious. just, 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 just the way, like, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was really funny, especially in the beginning with the character who's dressed as Shaka Zulu. Oh yeah, and yeah, like yes. everyone actually addresses him as if he is the yes. Shaka guy, like, and he also addresses them and responds as if he is that person. Yes. So, basically, the story takes place on like this cultural village where tourists apparently come to like you know have a tour of Zulu culture, Zulu homestead, and all mm-hmm. that kind of thing and I imagine tourism as we know in African countries is big business, big source of revenue but then again what I thought was great about this film was where, how they kind of satirized tourism in a way and mm-hmm. like how, how, how would I put it, culture, is it culture appro- expropriation or something? Oh, like, that's yeah, so yeah, yeah like I don't know like exploitation yeah, yeah. because it's still another way of like we are you no know, performative culture I guess because yes. again in a way we may not be as tied as we are to like some of these ways of dressing or belief and all that but mm. still in the way this film was showing it like because some people want to come and pay money for this thing sometimes even you will have to like play into it mm. and yeah, and yeah, to panda. you have to yeah. panda yeah. your own culture imagine to like <laughs> <this>. <laughs> yeah. so that's that was probably the thing I found the most interesting about that just basically a satire or a uh, just mocking the whole very idea of tourism in a way, especially yeah. when it's not being done for, you know, the right reasons. If you're like, you just basically like ex- exotic, <coughs> how do they call it? Exoticizing the place? Exoticizing. I think that's the word. I'm trying to find <laughs> out to find the right word, but I know exoticize. It's like, it's like it's like I guess the Af- the, the African the the new colonial version of yes. gentrifying or something like. Yeah, basically gentrifying oh, culture in a way. Yeah, but but I, I get what you're saying yeah. in terms of like this is this exotic. Yeah, like, uh, like you're no, basically no. selling your exot your culture because it's seen yes. as very exotic and all that. And that's yeah. something again. There's the whole debate here of like we have to stick to our roots and all that, <laughs> and we have to be in touch with our culture. But again, there are some people who do that for the wrong reasons. They're probably just pandering for the sake of getting money so, so should you stick to your roots if it makes you no, i mean just be who you are like <laughs> be, be who you are i mean you don't have to like go out of your way to <laughs> perform yeah. your identity like for you to actually be a thing like your roots will always be there but when you get into the area where you perform it a mm. bit more then that's where there's a problem i feel yeah so yeah the beast i would say but i'm also really shocked that had a white director because i felt this was very critical of the white gaze and all that stuff so oh, yeah it was, I was actually very shocked to find that it was a white director mm-hmm. yeah 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 this, this was definitely one of my favorite films as well mm-hmm. um i really really liked the for, for me it was comedic it was almost mm-hmm. uh, satirical 
in a sense, because you had these, an elect that was literally actors, mm. almost has a meta thing to it, yeah. which had like these actors play Playing acting actors. in this yes. fake cultural yes. village, yes. <laughs> several layers of all that stuff. Um, but I really liked the Shatazu character, obviously. I liked the little things he was saying, um, like about how his career hadn't panned out the oh, way it yeah, was, yeah. how he wanted to play, play white, white characters, yeah. like more depth. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think those are criticisms I've heard from some people about like African cinema versus like European or American cinema. Like if we even just to take it out of like the theater mm. space which this movie was in. Um, I, I kind of got what he was saying. It was like it felt like he was not doing anything of substance. And I liked I really liked those dark conversations that would happen in the middle, like the one by the fireplace. Mm-hmm. With that chick he was like vibing, like, ah, I'll leave my wife and I'll take you over where. Yeah. Um I liked I liked how she was basically l- like laying out what his life was going to become. Like you're probably just going to play this character till you're washed up and then you put on overalls and become a gardener. Like that will be <laughs> your whole yes, life. Yes, like those yes. are your options, yeah. And it was so sad because you could see how much potential, how much energy was being wasted mm-hmm. in him. And I felt like that was a great picture of like a lot of youth in Africa, really, in general. Mm-hmm. And I really, really loved when you're talking about the white gaze, those yeah. interactions yeah. between them. Because even like like that fair place thing, I loved that they were speaking in their mm-hmm. language. Yeah. And these white people were probably oh, just yes, seeing it yes, as yes. like, oh, they're just doing this quaint performance yeah. about like, it's like, it's like we're observing yeah. the Africans in their yeah. habitat or something. Exactly. It had those vibes. Yeah. It was <laughs> like a zoo, <laughs> like Africans. Africans. It was so interesting. <laughs> and the chick was doing the selfie. It was like, oh, can you take another one? Because you'll probably chop the head. And then like, I like that she chopped the head. <laughs> so like the next, really funny. Like I, yeah. like I don't see how it was depressing. And I really loved the monologue at the end. I'm not very familiar with Shakespeare. Yeah. Uh, don't really care much. Um, but I really liked the monologue he did from whatever play that yeah. was. And how he was basically speaking to the fact that they have a shared humanity. And I love that haunting line at the end where it's like, you know, I'm going to we're going to better our teachers in the end. Like all the things you're teaching me, I'm going to like kind of flip back on you. And they love the reaction to that, which is just <laughs> nothing. Wow. And they yeah, just to the like line. nothing. <laughs> I love the click of the camera. Just A A plus A plus yeah. story. Like script. Yeah. I think this is one of the films where I'm like script wise, strong. strongest. Yeah. So strong, so strong. Yeah. What yeah. did you think about it? I really liked it. I think. Um, it stuck out to me also the kind of images that they pulled off, like just in the framing of people, mm. the, especially at the end, like that, the way that yeah. happened was so affecting, yeah. like it was so, like, talked about having like bad endings that you forget, that one you could not forget, yeah. there was a way it was done that was just so good, I felt it so sad, because I'm like, man, these things are real, Yeah, <laughs> it was just so dark, I was like, oh. Like I know that they're not doing that. They're not. They're trying to ease me into it, but yes. no. It's like our pain. It's just so miserable. <laughs> I could not take it. <laughs> so that I think it's such a great film. It's such great commentary, but mm. it just makes me so sad yeah. about the reality of that. And then this is also something that's visible. In Nyama, I think have we already passed no. the day? No, it's the same, same thing. day. Yeah. yeah, it's something same that's theme. really busy. It's the same theme, theme in Nyama because it's about the tourism that happens amongst the Batwe. Batwa. 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 Mm. Batwa. And ah, now Nyama for it, it's like telling you like, this sucks. Uh, but yeah, it just kicked. Ah, it was not great. I, I, I couldn't get into the humor because of the reality of the thing. I can get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, what's your pick? Yeah, my favorite film on a lighter note uh, was, was Little Faith. Um, <laughs> documentaries. I can't say I watch that many. Like I like like I like like the Ross Kemp ones, which are like just a person going yeah. to crazy situations. I like documentaries of personalities. Yeah. I think always fascinating to me, and I think this is the first Ugandan documentary of personality yeah. that I've seen, because 
the concept in of itself feels like a story that you have had to death like several times before so with this one i think it's a story about a the first female doctor in karamoja which mm-hmm. is yeah interesting in of itself because mm-hmm. i think it's like you i think ugandans were still mostly stuck with an image of karamoja from like the 90s that we see on new tv Has so yeah over. like yeah exactly like that's kind of where we're stuck in so it's kind of interesting to see well, for Ugandans to really learn more about themselves it was really my biggest takeaway from this documentary. Just see like where this society was in uh, this modern framework of the world. It was really nice to hear that like a girl managed to get educated given the hurdles that she was going through. So, it, so the story was impactful on its own level there. But what I would say I really enjoyed was the delivery. Because this could have turned into like a big sob story, like one of those sad stories where it's like, oh my God, uh, everybody is so poor up here and we're all suffering, oh my God. And then they play up the music. We've watched those stories mm-hmm. several times. But this one, I feel like the person directing it came with a certain cheerful energy that took me off guard completely. And it felt like there was a B story with her. Because we had the A story of like the story that the documentary is telling and the B story of this character who felt like a placeholder for us, just going into this world and like exploring it with an open heart. And she was really meeting everybody at their level. She didn't it didn't feel like she came with any preconceived ideas or try to like hammer a certain narrative. It's just like, you know, I've arrived here on vibes. I'm so happy to meet everyone. Tell me what you guys are doing. Like, it seems so chill. Like, it's such an interesting entry point. And I don't think it's an easy energy for anybody, just anybody to master. I think that's why it was special to me. So, I, I think I've watched this documentary, like, twice, thrice, actually thrice now. Um, I watched it on my own just because I enjoyed it as well. Because... <laughs> Again, her energy was just that good. I do hope she continues to make uh, documentaries. I even liked some of the editing as well. It was like pretty creative. The, some of those digital like pans and stuff. I, I don't know what the technical term is specifically, mm. but like those almost like wipes. Oh, um, joint two shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, those were those were really really nice. Um, I also like some of the characters at the end, like the nun who kept the school open during COVID. That was a positive, as opposed to like yeah, everything shut down. And I like that they were harboring all these girls until like run away from home. But there's some kind of movement going on. Like these are all interesting things to know about Uganda that I feel like I otherwise here in my Kampala would not have known. Um, so yeah, this was a very nice documentary. I think it's the most fun I've had watching a documentary in a long time. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, again, another one of uh, movies I didn't see. Oh! Yeah, yeah but still, yeah. but still sounds very interesting. And again, you said Karamoja. Yeah. Again, recently they were in, like, in the news with like there being like a whole famine and stuff. And yeah. again, usually like they are kind of left out of the narrative of Uganda in a way. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there's that terrible saying of we can't wait for Karamoja to develop. It's oh, yeah. terrible. She, she yeah, that out yeah that. like it's, <laughs> it's terrible. But yeah, like so like just people telling stories from that part of the country. Yeah. yeah it's good. But I, I didn't see that one. What should I be? Did Sharon. you see it, Sharon? What, what did you I think? I'm really happy that she likes it. I see where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really think Little Faith was a stranger for me. I found it really totally off-putting mm-hmm. and because of the thing that you like is the thing that I really didn't like. Yeah. It felt like a showcase of her personality and I'm like, this is why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Choice. Mm-hmm. But then, and then um, at some point then it felt like a new segment to me. Uh-huh. Um, it, the tonal shifts were not smooth. Like the shift from the sad moments and then to her happy mm-hmm. was so strange for me. I'm like, if anyone, like, you leave the documentary and she's the only thing you remember, which is weird, I think. <laughs> she's, the, she's the only thing you remember? Because that's the thing that's showcased the entire time. Okay. Because <laughs> that's the presentation that's there. So I okay. found that a bit strange. I, well, I don't know why, but I thought maybe, because even the topic, Faith, um, Faith herself, yeah. is a really interesting person, but... Mm. We don't really even get to see much of 
that interesting side that she could have because mm-hmm. there's Afri there with her really big personality, which is, I really think she's amazing. Like, she has such a strong personality. I think she must be great. Mm-hmm. But in this talk, mm-hmm. there, were, there were some moments that were just so glaringly different tonally mm-hmm. that became a bit off-putting for me. I guess I'll also say in all fairness, when I watch a Ross Kemp documentary, he's all that I remember. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Moore documentary. Oh, yeah, oh, Michael Moore. Moore. It's yeah. the Michael Moore yeah. show. And I also was like, what makes, okay, strong documentaries, right? <laughs> <laughs> you really struggle <laughs> to <laughs> phrase. <laughs> really have, say, we are talking over and over again about this, you mm. don't mm. Let, wait for Carbonja mm. to develop. Yeah. I'm like, why it felt like a new segment is because it felt like something done in two days, like in terms mm-hmm. of being set up. Like, I think some more historical things about mm-hmm. it. I know that's what every documentary does, but mm-hmm. that's the stuff that really made it seem like a new segment. It was a bit of an NGO film. A bit. <laughs> I know, it's actually, I think it's more dodgy than the NGO okay. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Like, I think also with the elements, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the coverage yeah. that she's talking about, which, which is a fair criticism. Yeah, the coverage, it really felt like I was. Suspicious if it might have been one day. Mm. It was really yeah. small coverage. Hey. <laughs> really small. Yeah, yeah. but that I guess, is yeah. I horrible. guess also, yeah. I mean, that's fair. I guess, I guess also short film. Short documentary. Short documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the runtime, which I forget. But I think it was. was the runtime is. How long was it? 22. 22 minutes. Oh. Yeah, it's like actually quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I com- I completely get um, and it I think this is I can kind of see how this can be a film you either like or hate because it is completely because <laughs> it does it does have a very glaring selling point and you either buy into it or you don't, or you don't. Yeah, so I can get I can cool. see that now. Yeah. Okay. As for uh, the rest of the films. Yes, yeah, so overall. <laughs> and uh, oh, day two or oh, day two? Yeah, day two. How how did day day two compare to day one for you? I think I prefer day two. I really like Nyama. Okay. And okay. Nyaminji was interesting. I don't know. Did you see it? The Nyaminji uh, video? No, I've, I've seen it before. Like before oh, the festival, okay. I've seen that. What did stuff you think of it? It was okay. I mean, I liked the music part of it, especially. I think mm-hmm. it was more about that, but mm-hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah. It was an interesting line between a sh- like an al- like a showcase for the artist, yes. like an album yes. trailer. Yeah. It was a very yeah. very. <laughs> I saw how he kind of did yeah. it, cause, but but then in the Q and A he did explain yeah. that that it was kind of the genesis, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it kind of became a documentary because yeah. again he was genuinely interested by like oh there are these other things and these other things. Yeah. So I did like the genuineness of that, and I could see it and. I actually really enjoyed it. It is a microculture that I have never given any thought yeah. to. So I mean, the people? I mean that it was that deep. I mean, I di- I also I didn't know how deep it went. There's a whole Nyabinji sect in Rastafarian. I really have never noticed. Maybe I'm not going to enough Rastafarian bars clearly. Anyway, so yeah. for the final final day, yeah. Saturday, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. my pick is Satisfaction. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Satisfaction is a film written and directed by Yvonne Sewakambo. She's a Ugandan, mm-hmm. living in Canada. Um, this film is about sex, which is why I like it. It's about female orgasms and how they are not many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I read. laughs> yeah, yeah. So I really, really liked it. Also I also dug that there was masturbation in it. I am if I had money I would be on a pro masturbation campaign. I really think women need to masturbate more. Dildos. People really need to masturbate more and from the young age. Like we have to be serious. Wow. And this was our last podcast. It was nice for cancel. <laughs> yeah immediately <laughs> I, I really, so I really liked it, like, cause in the film, they, it, it's 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 described as an embarrassing incident that forces a woman to choose between sheltering her surprise witness and finding her sexual voice, mm-hmm. cause she has just had sex with her boyfriend, and he came, she did not, yeah. and then she masturbates after it and he finds her 
and then he's like okay then she's honest with him i really have i must enjoy the experience of watching a man's face when he realized that his girlfriend wasn't coming all the time it was <laughs> heaven it was like yeah like it's i meant to to find out with time yeah. so he finds out in real time and then um he then tries to give her an orgasm and we're not sure if it does happen they said 20 minutes later mm-hmm. but it's unsure that it happened i don't think it happened mm-hmm. in the end which also valid which i liked even <laughs> i loved even more that It's after his trial he also failed it's not a one two punch mm-hmm. finish you want to become a pro on the first day <laughs> you know so i really really like this film for what it's about um more movies like this anything that <laughs> that will make way for more women having orgasms i'm happy with yeah. so if anyone yeah if this is like a, a a psa i would promote and it's not done that way like it's just a fun film yeah it's true, funny true, true. it yeah. is just a fun funny film yeah. truly yeah. so <laughs> for it to have this as Yeah. And I think we It's should like, be having that conversation as you say. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there are also plenty of other guys who are probably in the auditorium there who are like, what? <laughs> like these things happen how how like they probably can't yeah. sample so just can't. So it's good that people actually putting those putting these things out there so people can actually talk about them in the open not always being the conservative society. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where you don't talk about sex or things like that in the open. Yeah. I wish the director had said something because it would have been a fun thing for the whole audience to just be asking about really and not. talking about. It would have had some really interesting insights, I think. Because mm. Ugandans are also prudes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ugandans are also such big prudes, so some people can easily be so opposed <laughs> to this thing. Mm-hmm. But it was nice. And I like Patrick as an actor. I enjoyed seeing him like this. He's usually quite serious in his roles. And Sherry, I think this is her first role. She's actually fundraising for a film now, which she got all the money for. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, yeah, I get yeah, what I like. It's I also I like, which is also about sex. Similar sex, sex comedy. Mm-hmm. So nice. it's, yeah, it's also about sex and just liberation in a way. Mm-hmm. So nice. I like this. Yeah. I think we're is getting she, out of our position. Is she going to act in that? Because I actually like, she had a bit of, I, I enjoyed her, her screen uh, presence. Yeah. She was actually mm-hmm. quite, She does yeah, have good screen presence. Good screen presence mm-hmm. and... In her film credited on the fundraiser is the one of the women who was in Jangu Patience's film. Mm. Oh, Tracy, Tracy Cavalli. Yes, Tracy Cavalli. Yes, Shazam is going to be the lead in her film. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I really, really dug this movie. <laughs> so, uh, it's a wonder that it even existed. Yep. Um, to be given. You got it past UCC. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's it's nice. I think it was a nice conversation to have. It's a conversation I didn't think was going to be happening this soon mm. in our oh. lifetime. Mm-hmm. First of all, <laughs> but now <laughs> you are not as if we're in DC. What? That's how I feel. <laughs> what you can because like whenever I watch these movies, I'm not just picturing like the young people. I'm always picturing like our parents' generation. Because these are things I thought would happen when we're like their age or something. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'm glad someone was bold enough to like from something like this i mm. really like that it was phrased as a comedy yeah. yes the synopsis already made me laugh because it's described like it's the scene of a crime <laughs> <laughs> like who oh, something funny. happened and then the, sus- the witness a surprise <laughs> witness like that? So that yeah but I, it, for me really exemplified the awkwardness i guess for the situation that maybe the average woman or man yeah. would feel about yeah. that situation in uganda yeah. um I also like because it seemed like she was also shy about the uh, self pleasure yeah. as well to begin with, uh, yeah. doing it in front of the dude. Yeah. And it was interesting for me because until until we spoke today, I hadn't considered that it might have ended in her still not getting a climax. Mm-hmm. The end of the story, but if that is so, I it's interesting what it says about the fact that she still wound up having to stroke his ego. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because like oh, I it's like oh, I'm so sorry. You tried so <laughs> hard, like so I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna give you a way. Pat on the back. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise you might just be like, okay, I'm just never going to do anything with mm-hmm. you again. And then he would just like kind of be like. Ugh. Yeah, so for me it also op- op- like opens the. There's also like an extra conversation which maybe she'll get into with her larger movie. Like, Does she plan one? Oh, you mean no, 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 Sherry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Of 
like yeah. what constitutes you know good sex because i think i've been asked that before someone asked you what's good sex yes in an intellectual way. <laughs> <laughs> intellectual please <laughs> 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 the day when we were just pontificating <laughs> and extrapolating <laughs> <laughs> yes, like in your opinion. There's <laughs> over, there's over a tea. It's very classy, I promise. So, <laughs> and yeah, at first I think I was like a pretty young dude at that point. Not that I'm really old now, <laughs> but younger. And at first I used to think like, no, it just constitutes like, I like the people get a climax. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. not exactly. <laughs> it's like I can see. Yeah, that, I should just say, how old are you again? Okay, I get why. You think that's what it is. How did that one? I will not try to them out. You know, but <laughs> but it it does because because not going to the whole thing of needing to stroke the male ego, like at least from from what I've gotten to understand and why I'm glad movies like this are coming out like the female experience of sex has been completely sidelined mm-hmm. and even the parameters for like what constitutes as like yeah I got mine that night and I'm like good could it be something as simple as like oh we hang out for a bit we made out and I'm good to go <laughs> and before I do it's like just the one thing yeah. so it's like no I have to do X Y Z and then that constitutes as I have achieved yeah. so I think also within this movie he was kind of putting the same pressure and, and, and I think there's also a layer of that yeah. where she might have also been now feeling pressure uh-huh. to give one so it's interesting that they entered a longer thing mm-hmm. and it still had to be performative I'm like really leaning towards your theory now because it makes a lot of yeah. sense it makes more sense if, it, if this before even talking with Lisha about it because I found it so anticlimactic and I'm like I really hope Mm. So my also feeling like she did not finish is the better like now it has a real climax. Yeah. Now. Like that's now a complete Ironical. film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> now that is a sad movie for me. <laughs> yeah. No, that that okay. to me is realistic. Okay, I, uh, my third film, which was on the final day, uh it says Vanilla. Which was direct say a short film directed by a female director called Aganza Kisaka, who I had seen in a few films like the Ugandan circuit. I think yeah. uh, there's which one? There's two to mix like action films, usually at National Theatre. What's his name? Yeah, she was in one of those. I, I know that that Breaking or something. Yes, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, forgetting yeah, his, name, yeah. his name. Yeah, but yeah, he's a yeah. I've seen her in a few things. So uh, in this film, basically, mm-hmm. it's uh, about a mother. Who has to take care of her child with Down syndrome, and uh, again, something she said, the director said in the Q and A was that in her family they have had a long history of uh, having Down syndrome. People like it's something genetic in their family, so they have had to figure out ways, like systems, you know, so like support to mm. whoever is in the family who has it, because they know it's they they know it's like something that always happens and mm. like it's really no one's fault. It's just a genetic thing that they all have. So in this film, uh, basically, uh, the best thing about it was the acting, because the actors, the two main actors, there's uh, Gladys Oyenbot mm. and uh, it's called Malaika, I think? Malaika, Malaika yeah, yeah, Malaika. Yeah, yeah, two actresses who I've seen in a few things, and whenever I see them, I'm like, you're always great. Yes. So in this film, uh, Gladys plays the mother of uh, the child with Down syndrome, and we see her go through her daily routine, like just taking care of the kid, being a very uh, reaffirming source of support mm. for this child but then she actually does eventually get visited by her sister who's like on a completely different trajectory i think she has like a white boyfriend or something she's living her best life basically <laughs> and like we kind of see the contrast between the two women mm-hmm. and the lives they're living and how they haven't fully and like how they're sisters but they haven't fully understood the issue of like the care she has to give for this kid so there's this really great scene where they have this epic back and forth mm-hmm. where uh, Gladys as the mother really gets into her pain and her struggles and mm-hmm. why she has to do what she does and why she values her child so much and she can't just drop and then of course there's a bit of the pushback from the other sister who's like you know what like you can go live your best life like you used to be so young and vibrant and all that mm-hmm. but by the end of it of course she has seen that you know, the other sister understands that 
it is what it is and this her taking care of her child gives her life meaning and purpose and sometimes that's even more than all the flashy glamorous life mm-hmm. that women want to live out there like for me like it's suffering but you actually put pouring yourself into something with real meaning as opposed to so just at the end the other sister kind of seeing it and actually offering like how can i help like her actually having that change in perspective mm. was really really heartwarming and again the fact that it's about down syndrome and again things like uh mental health and uh mm. mental sometimes impairments and stuff like that are rarely discussed sometimes people with down syndrome in our families and societies are just like pushed to the back and it's like this thing we know is there but people don't talk about it as much so the fact that she was able to come with this very personal story of like down syndrome and just like the support that has to be there was really touching so so yeah Vanilla was my favorite film from the final day yeah. mm-hmm. <coughs> I really liked it and I really really love Gladys like mm-hmm. Gladys is such a fantastic fantastic actress like people, a lot of acting is with words and with movement in body but her face she really really acts mm. on that face yeah. which is just like really really good yeah. so i always enjoy her and i really enjoy her this and her with the actor that that does yeah. have down syndrome, down syndrome like and, and super know. super great yeah mm. yeah right this <laughs> man amazing amazing actress man actual chills uh like her monologue at the end yeah. uh, with her sister and my like as well yeah. an amazing yeah. actress yeah. she was two were yeah. really great together all their scenes um brilliant and i think i also want to give kudos to the director which is a very actors director which yeah. is rare mm-hmm. especially in these parts mm-hmm. Um, but you can feel the attention to detail and the level of collaboration that went into it. And there even like some subtle things technically I enjoyed. Um, I think like when Malaika and her were like finishing the argument mm. and then the daughter comes home. Mm. I really enjoyed just a simple pan with the yeah, door. Yeah, the mm. door thing was, was cool. so nice. It's like we shifted the frame. Mm, yeah. So nice. Um, I like those subtle little touches. Um, So yeah and uh, this was her first uh, mm-hmm. short film mm-hmm. as well which is great again you'd hope your first short film comes out this nicely yeah, <laughs> yes and again tackling a uh, thing like uh, an issue like down syndrome mm-hmm. is also rare mm-hmm. and this was because this is a very intimate like character driven movie so it really gets down into what got so like the character and emotional situation we've been going through and especially for a short film i i really felt the sense of time that had passed again gladys really carried the weight of a lifetime yeah. it felt mm-hmm. on her face mm-hmm. and it wasn't uh because i think she she also i forget whether she said this during the q and a or when i talked to her after but she she was worried about this turning into one of those typical mother roles like you kind of oh. mother roles right it's very easy to slip into that yeah. where it's just this one note sadness yeah. suffering yeah. what so i really like the layers she injected into the character because there are these elements of like cheerfulness because this actually you feel the genuine joy she has in interacting with her daughter And whereas on the outside you think man your life is really terrible and you must really be suffering must be, uh, like Donna. Yeah, she was still like meeting her daughter on her level, actually treating her as a human being and enjoying the levels mm-hmm. of interactions they were able to have together. Mm-hmm. And I really felt that love from that and she really brought it really like added to the conflict you'd feel between family members because I think she asks like what am I supposed to do like throw her in some home? And you're like, yes, it's really not an easy decision. So you can't like toss a person aside because it's inconvenient. And then talking to a lot of people in the audience, people that came up to her mm. afterwards, I think there were a few people that actually had family members, more people within the audience within the themselves. Audience, oh, yeah. And all they kept saying was the accuracy was on point and the way she brought up what they were feeling and like some of the conversations they had was they were like this is eerie like this is stuff that we have got they were like gone through personally so it's great to have a movie that impactful it feels like this is a movie that will travel actually quite a bit I really hope. should have yeah because it like yeah it's played yeah because it's played in Toronto 
Oh yeah. Already like so it premiered and then now it's here in Uganda. So I'm hoping more screenings happen in Uganda, especially, and more people get to see it. Because I think that's also something some people are saying it's like we should put this like on TV somewhere where everybody can like mm-hmm. see it. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Segwaying to my pick uh, was Sungura uh, by Lydia Matata who is a returning filmmaker to the festival. I forget the name of the other movie she did. Yeah, Millet. Yeah, yeah, yeah Millet, which was a really fun movie. This was... I like I like kind of um, tracking the evolution as well, like the cinematic language of directors, and has like leapt mm. in film. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, Millet was fun, but like on a technical level, this one was like way higher and it was even like done more minimally because the whole concept takes place in just one space mm. one room and what she did with that one room yeah. was amazing for like a 30 minute run time so it's basically uh i think it's a bridal shower is that, is that what they call them yeah yes. yeah yes, yes, it is. yeah um and you have this our main character is this uh lady who is uh like in a wheelchair so she's disabled and she's showing up to this party for a friend who's like the queen bee of the whole thing and she's the one who's getting married and it's what you it's the typical bridal shower shenanigans and hijinks but like through the lens of this person who has like these limitations but the movie has way more substance than that because it does actually do a pretty good job of like hinting at all the characters kind of in the room but like in broad strokes sometimes but you do get some of like the prudishness when it comes to like discussing sexual Same. issues, and I, I I think that's why I felt it really paired well with something like Satisfaction and some of the other movies in the lineup that day. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we're all we all like really female led conversations about sexuality, culture, and like a bunch of other issues. So it was interesting as well that especially for Satisfaction and Sungura, these were things that were kind of being shot almost simultaneously. Oh. Yeah, almost. Um, so I did like the story. Um, I did like, it did give an insight as well. Because uh, yeah, the character had quite a bit of like uh, rage, was quite a bit of like misunderstandings across like the characters. And I really liked the microaggressions <laughs> that were happening across. I think those are my favorite things in movies when it's like really, really subtle. And well, there's some really entertaining jabs in this. The or the audience really seemed to enjoy them. They really like the, <laughs> yeah. were Even the same with Vanilla, by the way, which the the director was, I think, after was saying, you know, that that was not the intention she had making the movie. Yeah. But I was like, I just told her, you know, entertainment's entertainment. <laughs> you know, people enjoy it, but like, yeah, and glad yeah, it's going yeah, at yeah. it. And you know, that's enough sometimes for yeah. a movie. Um, and yeah, this one has like a lot of those interactions, a lot of. It educated um also very shallow modern women like had yeah, it's still it, super shallow yeah <laughs> very very shallow actually in a lot of areas uh what was also interesting is how uh, the senga thing has been yeah, exported yeah, yeah. to Kenya, uh, to Kenya. Yeah. they don't they don't Wait. have senga yes. yes we have a senga coming yes that's what they call no 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 i thought like yeah, singers are a thing in UG. I thought yes. they were also in Kenya. No, mm-hmm. even that phrase singer is because they've heard of it in Uganda. Yeah. Hey. And they're like, and that's then, really cool. We want it that's too. Cool, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's our cultural contribution yeah. to East Africa. <laughs> yes, yeah. Because they're like, this would be cool for these older ladies coming in and giving us these sexual tips and yeah. So that that for me was interesting, the mm. cultural integration. Mm. And yeah. It was nice also seeing a bunch of sex toys in our faces <laughs> on the big screen. Mm-hmm. Hey, just kind of like satisfaction. It's just nice to have these kinds mm-hmm. of movies. Mm-hmm. Again, I thought we'd have to wait quite a while mm-hmm. for people who are daring enough to do stuff like this. But yeah, mm-hmm. Sumura is an amazing film. Uh, Lydia is an amazing director mm-hmm. as well. Uh, from the Q&A, I could also feel her freeness. I also got to meet her in person. As well as Ziff, and you have very free spirit, hat on her sleeve, yeah. and I can feel the open heartedness in the movie. Uh, really, really translates well. But yeah, that was my pick for best film. Mm-hmm. No, I I loved Sombra as well. Yeah. Again, as you said, it was 
in the lineup, as I said, probably maybe it's because there are a bit more female directed movies mm -hmm. in this lineup. But then again, I feel it really did put forth that question again. As you say, these are things that perhaps because singers are part of our culture, mm -hmm. these discussions are hard, but they're hard behind yeah. closed yeah. close <laughs> doors. So just that the fact that people actually putting these things out there and kind of getting everyone to know that, yeah, like things like sexuality and pleasure, even for even for women especially, are like mm -hmm. things that really should be explored and discussed openly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel that was probably the best thing. I, I was hoping for there to be a bit more of like a connection with her being in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. but it was just part, it was just, I think, a character development thing. I don't think it was... Because mm -hmm. she's, she's not different from any of the other girls. Yeah, yeah. which is what they really, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I didn't feel like uh, being in a wheelchair really was that much of a handicap. Maybe she's not getting as much, who knows, but I feel like sexually she, she, she operates like any other woman, so... Yeah, they, we kind of like brushed through that. In yeah, because I thought it was going to be yeah, so it was going to be a major like aspect of it, like, but it was just basically again human pleasure being discussed on film. So. Good film. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I enjoyed seeing like the the audience really react to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th I thought it was great. I loved the colors, and she talked about how colorful mm -hmm. her, her film is, and how she was inspired by Rafiki, Rafiki and all the colors that it has. I liked how she was like, we always do grunge films. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that, and the color, I, like, I've never been to a, a bridal shower that pretty. These days, okay, people do exceeding deco, but yeah. <laughs> I really like the setup that she had, and the colors that she picked, and just how it looked all so shiny. Yeah. Um, yeah, the singer was such a modern singer, like a singer that comes with Delta. <laughs> yep. Modern as hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was good. I think it, for, yeah, for the things it explored, I think it explored them to a degree, like it was, yeah, yeah. Um, not too much, especially because she's mixing two things between shedding a light on disability and how people ignore everything, mm. and then also thinking about sexuality and how conservative people sometimes are. Um, I thought the meanness from both sides was a bit too mean for me. Like, you called them microaggressions, mm. they were aggressions. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> both towards the, the disabled person and mm. towards um, sex sexuality as well. Yeah, they were doing some things that were wild, like the time they were dancing on top of the bottles. The bottles. <laughs> and like, you're the ones who are prudes from where you are. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> yeah, but that was fun. I liked it. And Lydia sings great. And Lydia was at the the last like live. Gallery. Yeah, she was. She was. Yeah, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, as for the rest of that day. <sighs> yes. I really liked Adia name. It was so good. Mm, yes. Yes. It was good. Yeah, also one of the films that's really about blackness but has a white director, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a thread. Yeah. <laughs> Open heart. Yeah, <laughs> it means. Yes. At least she, at least she, I, I do like that she allowed for like all the languages as well to be thrown in there. Mm. Like, that was, that was, was very nice. cool. Yeah. That was very cool. I really like that. Um, the Aunt Queen, I mean, like, I really, really like the Aunt Queen. Yeah. It was so cute. Mm -hmm. the, and the way she was just like a, a, a pest there yeah. with no one seeing. <laughs> it was so cute. Yeah. A very accurately written child. Mm -hmm. That felt like a day in the life of a child proper. So good. The little, even the little things she was saying, like, oh, I saw the neighbor kissing so and so's husband. Like, that's something that happens when you're a kid. That's why you can't have one kid in the house. I know. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Mm -mm. Yeah, it was a sweet film. The others you want to talk about that day, just um, thinking of. Yeah, and Queen. I think Mukazi is the only one we haven't mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mukazi yeah. Was Which was also interesting because it's Mukazi but directed by men. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We're gonna say you as struggle as if you're not doing anything. This is gonna be struggle to ever yeah, reach yeah, that height. That moment. Yeah. The that was a magic was just moment. So good. But that was a good bit that year. There was an overwhelming amount of good movies, so a problem. We tried to pack in every good movie, and it was like a struggle to cut, like actually painful to cut movies out. So the years where there's an overabundance, then the years which are scarce and you hustle. I imagine also post COVID, people weren't making that. That's true. Money. That too. I'm like, surprised this many you know, were made, I, I, by actually, the way. You know, maybe like so in the art world, like mm. post COVID has been like massive like mm. just like even those months after covid there was just exhibitions and the work was like leveled up mm. you know i thought that would happen for phil but that mm. hasn't it's kind of it's slow. slowly yeah. it's crawling really, back it's different different is different. for sure it's so, yeah. but i thought at least for me my thinking was okay the way the artists have had time to be in their studio the writing should be stronger but then, say like here, there was barely anything written. Most of them were docs and, you know, the written ones were a few. Mm-hmm. So I thought there would be like a quality right? Well, In that thing that you do by yourself. There might be a boom, I could like, like next year, year, like after yeah. like we're finally like then people yeah, get, get their feet Because these then. might have also been movies that had been pre-written yes. looks uh, and then production yes. was halted yeah. and then they picked up production afterwards. So not, not everyone might have gone back and been like, oh, let me go touch yeah. up the... It's the way Lukman so talks about his stuff, like, really, it's so back, 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 like, right. the me now exactly. is very different from yeah. the me then. Exactly. Let's wait and see, boom, next year. Mm-hmm. Boom. You're still hoping, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, is there any other festival? I feel like now, this year, this will be the only one, it and UFF. There's no other. Does Palm Africa Film Festival still happen? No. Half? Does it still happen? I don't think even Amakula doesn't even happen. Even Amakula doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, Amakula Amakula happen. Doesn't like happen. Even Europe, East Africa. Last last festival standing. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. god. Okay. Yeah. I mean let's hope they come back next year. I liked having like five festivals. Yeah, it year. was five nice. There would even be some repetitions but which were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's it. That's been Galabi. And is it year six? Mm-hmm. Which is crazy because I think we covered the very first one. We've done all, we've done all of them. We've never missed. So imagine that's how long we've been recording. <laughs> 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 yeah. Live, 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 live. Uh, so. <laughs> okay, this is it for us today. Yes, it is. Um, if you're listening to Cinema Red Pill, subscribe to YouTube, subscribe on the podcast channels. Yeah, I'm Sharon. And I'm Timothy. Yeah, that's it. People make films about themselves. What they want, what they love, what they fear most. Here we're looking at the props and their stories. Somebody say,